Right now, we're going to provide a kind of quick intro to the idea of what confounding is. You probably already have a good idea of what it is and have learned about it in the previous intro stats course as well as in some of the epi courses. Um, and I should say we're going to do a, a brief introduction now. We're going to look at it a bit in R and in a data set. And then in following lectures, we're going to expand on the idea a bit more. But essentially, confounding, it happens when the effect of our variable of interest, so remember we're using x1 as our variable of interest, when the effect of our variable of interest is stuck together or mixed with or confounded with another variable x2. So the kind of classic diagram, first we'll write it generically, is x2 is associated with x1, our variable of interest, and x2 also has some effect on the outcome. So um, you can recall when fitting a regression model, we have it here, y is b0 plus b1x1. Right? This b1 tells us what effect does x1 have on the outcome. Okay, so b1 is kind of here. What effect does x1 have on the outcome? Now, there might be some other variable, x2, that's associated with x1, okay, and it can be distorting the effect of x1 on y. Okay, these two effects can be stuck together. So the effect that x1 has on y and the effect that x2 has on y are a little bit stuck together. And that happens when x2 is not included in the model. So let's just think of this example in our data set. We have age. We have smoking, and we have the FEV, or the lung capacity. And our goal here is to try and estimate what effect does smoking have on the lung capacity of these kids. Now let's suppose that age is not included in the model. Right? What we've already discovered for this data set is that the smokers are older on average than the non-smokers. Right? This data set is kids ranging from 3 to 19 years old. Okay, so the three years old, four, five, six, seven, eight, none of those are smokers. Right? So the non-smokers on average are younger. And what do we notice, um, or what do we know about this? Younger kids have smaller bodies, smaller lung capacities. The older kids have bigger bodies, bigger lung capacities. The smokers are older on average. Okay, so the smokers are also older on average. So the effect of smoking and the effect of age are gonna be a bit stuck together if we don't include age in the model. When we include age in the model, when we include this other variable in the model, then this coefficient here, B1, gives us what's the effect of smoking on FEV adjusting for the age, right? Or comparing the smoking effect for two people who are the same age. Okay. So just to kind of add to that, the way confounding can occur is in this example, if the age or the x2 distribution is different for smoking and non smoking. Okay, so some of the ways to identify confounding is when x2 and x1 are associated. So there's some association between x2 and x1. Um, x2 is also associated with the outcome, but x2 has some effect on the outcome. Age has some effect on um, FEV or lung capacity. An important one is that X2 is not on the pathway between X1 and Y. Okay, so what we mean by that is we don't have X1 having a direct effect on X2, which then has an effect on the outcome. Okay. We'll talk about these ideas later. Uh, we're going to call this mediation, or these are mediators. But we're saying that confounding cannot be when x1 directly affects x2, which then affects the outcome. 
Okay, so x1 and x2 are associated, but it's either that x2 affects x1, right? Age affects your likelihood of smoking, or these two are associated, but not with x1 causing x2, or x1 directly affecting x2. And the final thing is that it should make sense conceptually. And what I mean by that is we don't want to just see that numerically x1 and x2 are associated, but that should make sense conceptually, right? Does it make sense that the age distribution of smokers and non-smokers would be different? And I'd say, yes, I think it does, right? If we're looking at a group of kids, as they get older, they're more likely to smoke. Doesn't mean they're going to, but that association makes sense. Does it make sense that age has an effect on lung capacity? Yes, it does, right? As kids get older, their bodies get bigger. Their lungs should get bigger. So this is the concept or the idea of confounding. We're going to look at um, this particular example in R, and we're going to see how things look when we don't include age, and when we do include age, what seems to happen. But I guess maybe I should add one more thing to our list of criteria here. We'll do a more complete discussion of confounding later, but uh, maybe I should mention this quickly. When we adjust for x2, b1 changes um, a decent amount. And I want to keep that vague. There's not a rule for how much should it change. There are, I guess, some guidelines, but the idea is the effect of smoking on FEV when we don't include age, and then when we do include age, that effect should change a decent amount. Right? That tells us again that some of the age effect was mixed into the smoking effect. So the idea of confounding, if we don't include age in our model, age is still affecting smoking, which affects FEV. Right? So the age effect is mixed into the smoking effect, but we're not accounting for it in our model. Once we do account for the age effect, we can remove the part of the age effect that's mixed in with the smoking effect. Um, and I guess one thing I want to say before we end this discussion, the idea of um, what gets called residual confounding. Right? So we saw that confounding, that this confounder can bias or distort this effect a bit. And residual confounding is the, the bias or distortion that is still left over even when we adjust for age um, for this confounder. So, that would often happen, suppose we had age, say, in age categories of 0 to 10, 10 to 20. Right? Including that variable in the model, it's going to help us adjust for age a bit, but it's not going to be a very good adjustment. There's still going to be some confounding left over, you know, some age confounding left over, even though we have adjusted for age in some way. So let's get into looking at um, numerically how a confounder is going to behave in R on this um, example data set. Stick around guys, there's more to see and please stay safe.